Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. The Vatican has announced that Pope Francis's new apostolic exhortation, Rejoice and Be Glad, will be released at the Vatican next week. The title of the apostolic exhortation is the phrase used in Matthew 5:12, the end of the Beatitudes, which reads, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. On Monday, the Vatican will present Pope Francis's fourth main document, the Apostolic Exhortation, Gaudete et Exhortate. The document will involve the call to holiness in the modern world, a topic the Pope has explained in this way. Significa lasciare agire Cristo nelle nostre opere, che i suoi pensieri siano i nostri pensieri, i suoi sentimenti i nostri, le sue scelte le nostre scelte. E questo è santità. Fare come ha fatto Cristo è santità cristiana. The coordinator of the Council of Cardinals explained a few months ago that this issue is a key area of reform, spreading awareness that the church should not only engage priests, but rather everyone who has been baptized. We are all called to holiness, and if we don't achieve this, if we don't listen to this calling, the reform is not working. The document will be the fourth of Pope Francis's papacy. His other documents were the agenda of his pontificate, Evangelii Gaudium, the Laudato Si encyclical on care for nature and mankind, and Amoris Laetitia on the family. In news from around the world, the Congolese Bishops Conference is condemning the kidnapping of Father Celestine Ngango of St. Paul Karambe Parish in the Diocese of Goma, and they are demanding his immediate release. Father Ngango had, was leaving his parish after celebrating Easter Mass when the abductors pulled him out of a vehicle and ordered him to follow them into the bush. The area is notorious for kidnappings. Father Ngango's abduction brings to six the number of priests kidnapped since 2012 in eastern Congo. An estimated 100 militias are believed to operate in the area. Civilians in Congo's North Kivu region, which borders Rwanda and Uganda, have been brutalized by militias, rebels and military units, and thousands of women have been raped by these armed groups. Analysts say competition for mineral resources is the key factor fueling the violence, but recently succession politics added to the troubles. Catholics have have been vocal in their opposition to what they termed as an illegal third term for Congo President Joseph Kabila. As a result, the Catholic Church has found itself targeted with churches, convents, and Catholic schools being vandalized or looted by armed groups. In more news from around the world, Pope Francis expressed his support on Twitter for a toddler on life support in Great Britain. Doctors have not been able to make a definitive diagnosis of the 22-month-old's degenerative neurological condition. A high court judge backed a lower court's ruling saying the hospital can go against the wishes of the family and withdraw life support. Rome Reports has more. On Wednesday afternoon, Pope Francis tweeted a statement expressing his prayers for British baby Alfie Evans, who remains on life support. The Pope's tweet reads, It is my sincere hope that everything necessary may be done in order to continue compassionately accompanying little Alfie Evans and that the deep suffering of his parents may be heard. I am praying for Alfie, for his family, and for all who are involved. Alfie has been on life support since December 2016 due to a rare neurological condition. Despite his parents' legal efforts, the hospital could withdraw the infant's life support as early as Friday. This is not the first time Pope Francis has spoken out in the name of life, as the Holy Father also did so during the Charlie Guard case in June 2017. According to the parents' lawyer, they want to transfer their son to the Vatican-run Bambino Jesu Pedi Pediatric Hospital in Rome to see if it is possible to diagnose and treat his condition, but the high court ruling would prevent that from happening. And finally, in the news, with Armenian religious and political dignitaries on hand, Pope Francis blessed a new statue of a 10th century Armenian monk during a brief ceremony in the Vatican Gardens. Rome Reports has more on the ceremony. <laughs> This choral singing in Armenian began the inauguration ceremony of the new statue of St. Gregory of Narek in the Vatican Gardens. Pope Francis blessed the bronze piece in the likeness of this Armenian mystic from the 9th century. 
E questa statua di San Gregorio di Narek, sia benedetta e santificata. A large delegation from the Armenian government and Apostolic Church joined the Holy Father, the President of Armenia and the Apostolic Patriarchs, Karakin II and Aram I, were present. St. Gregory of Narek has been a doctor of the church since 2015. Pope Francis gave him this title in the same year as the centennial anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. The saint is considered a hero of Armenian culture and one of its most celebrated poets. He's known as the Saint Augustine of Armenians. He's also the symbol of ecumenism between Catholics and Orthodox Christians in Armenia. Before the ceremony, the Pope met in private with the president of Armenia, Sert Sargent, with whom he discussed the reality of Christian minorities within the context of the war that plagues the region. And that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson, don't forget you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.